Hey YouTube, I'm going to do a quick video this week on some of the mistakes that I've made buying aircraft in the past. So if you're looking at buying your first airplane or upgrading, please don't make these mistakes that I've made. So first let's start with a quick review of my ownership journey. I've owned eight aircraft since 1991 and so in roughly the last 30 years. Starting with a Cessna 120 uh, that I purchased in 1991, and actually with the help of my father. He was, he's also a pilot, and uh, we bought this airplane together, but I pretty much kind of restored it under supervision of uh, an AP I knew at the time. That airplane got flipped upside down at Weiser Air Park overnight when a thunderstorm came through. I, was, I couldn't afford a hangar, and it was tied down, and... That wrote that airplane off, and somebody bought it and rebuilt it. So in 1993, I bought, again, with the help of my father financing it, I bought a Cessna 170. I just got my CFI. I was 18 years old and my commercial, and I started using that airplane for instruction and for uh, commercial activities, aerial photography. Owned that airplane until I got out of college in 1997, then bought an F-35 Bonanza built in 1955. I had that airplane for three years. It's a relatively high uh, time airframe, but a good little airplane, had a good engine. Then I moved to the UK, so I was an expat twice in the UK. So from 2001 to 2002, I had an Emirad, uh, which was wooden. And I guess I just didn't like the idea of uh, a wooden airplane, so I sold it about a year later. And then I moved to a Zenair, which in the UK is equivalent of an experimental aircraft. And I had that airplane for four years. So it was a Zenair CH-250. Moved back to North America in 2007 and bought uh, the first 310 I had. That is the subject of all the older videos that you see on my channel. If you're a longtime subscriber, you'll know about the journey that I made in that airplane to upgrade it with new paint, new interior, and a significant avionics upgrade. Then I, because of my contacts in the UK, I got recruited back to the UK to work in the industry there, and I bought a Piper Archer, had that airplane for three years, flew it all over, went up to Scotland, over to Belgium, all the way down to the Pyrenees in southern France and Provence. Then moved back to North America in 2018 and bought the current 310 that I own now. So I've learned a lot over the years uh, buying and selling these various aircraft. So let me share with you the mistakes that I think I've made and I think other buyers make when buying aircraft. Buyer's mistake number one is buying an inactive plane that has been sitting these airplane can be money pits. So they might need engine overhaul if they've been sitting in a humid climate, there could be corrosion on the cylinders, and the engine on the camshaft. They might need tens of thousand dollars worth of uh, avionics, etc. One way for a sniff test, and this is what I do, especially since I'm usually typically looking at uh, kind of traveling machines, as I go on to flight aware and just look and see what the history or the activity level of the airplane is. When did it last land? How many flights has it made recently? Now there's some caveats with this. Obviously a VFR only airplane may not have ADSB, might not even show up. So it's just like I said, kind of a sniff test, but you obviously want to call the seller and ask them you know, how many hours did you fly the airplane last year? But again, flight aware might be a, a kind of quick and easy way just to see if an airplane that piques your interest has been flying. Mistake number two, buying a plane with hail damage. So the Cessna 170 that I owned in college had hail damage on the wings and the tops of the horizontal stabilizer and on top of the fuselage. And to be honest, in most cases, there's probably nothing structurally wrong with a hail-damaged airframe. It just really bugged me, and it affects the resale. And every time I went out to fly the airplane, I just looked at it and kind of sighed. Buyer's mistake number three 
is concentrating on good paint and interior. Paint and interior are relatively inexpensive compared to engine and avionics. Overhauling an engine, including the labor, can be thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Avionics can be tens of thousands of dollars, especially if you're trying to upgrade to IFR, whereas interior and paint are relatively inexpensive. AirTech sells do-it-yourself interior kits, which you can do under owner perform maintenance. And although painting an airplane is not cheap in the grand scheme of things, it's nowhere near the cost of uh, doing some of the more expensive things like engine and avionics. Buyer's mistake number four is buying an airplane without an autopilot. If you're planning on doing uh, long IFR cross countries, you definitely need an autopilot. If you're just doing the $100 hamburger and flying locally out in the country, you probably don't. But for those of us that are looking for a traveling machine, an autopilot is indispensable. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a new generation autopilot. Some of the even uh, the older generation autopilots can work great. I have a Navimatic 400A in my current Cessna 310, and the previous owner spent some money overhauling it, and it works great. Buyer's mistake. Number five is high airframe hours. There is a perception, and listen to that word very carefully, perception that high hours are bad. And really, it's more down to resale. If you buy an airplane with ten or 11,000 hours on the airframe, it'll probably be fine. It'll probably fly just great. I know there's DC-3s out there with 30,000 plus hours flying great with no issues. But the point is, it is going to affect resale and you just need to think about that. So you can get in cheaper to a higher airframe hours airplane, but buyer beware. And finally, buyer's mistake number six, passing on airframes with damage history. So there's different examples of damage history. There's kind of a spectrum. I've seen planes that the damage history is just simply hangar rash. The plane had maybe a reskinned elevator seen something kind of in the middle where there was nose gear collapse and that was 20 years ago and the engine and prop have been overhauled since and it's been through 20 annual inspections. And I've also seen an example of a Piper Cherokee that had new paint interior, beautiful avionics. It was just a fantastic airplane, but it had been run off the end of the runway and through a fence and down a ravine and it had like a completely rebuilt wing and the other wing was a new wing off of a, a of a salvaged airplane um, and the air fr airframe had been completely rebuilt. I, It was a great airplane, it looked great and the price was great, but the whole plane was basically a Franken airplane, as in Frankenstein, and I, I would pass, me personally, I'd pass on that, but to each their own. So I, the point is I wouldn't run from an airplane because it had a nose gear collapse or some kind of minor, minor prang. So it's quiz time. If you're sitting at your computer, get your mouse handy. If you're watching this on your smart TV, get your remote handy and get your hand on the pause button because I'm going to show four different quizzes, four different hypothetical aircraft purchasing scenarios where there's two airframes, two competing airframes, and I'm going to ask you which plane you would buy. So I want you to pause at the appropriate point and then think about it, and then I'll share my thoughts. So quiz number one, which of the following aircraft would you make an offer on? So Cessna 172, there's airframe A and airframe B. Airframe A has 5525 hours, 1290 since major overhaul. The paint and interior are rather shabby, they're five out of 10. It's got basic IFR with ADS-B, no autopilot, and flew 129 hours last year. Airframe B, is lower time, pretty low, relatively speaking, at $25.99. Lower time engine at 430 hours, has a brand new paint, a good interior that was replaced eight years ago, VFR avionics, no autopilot, and flew seven hours last year. Which airplane would you purchase? So pause here and have a think about it.
Okay, so here's my answer for me. I'd buy Airframe A. It flew 129 hours last year. And even though the paint and interior are pretty shabby, somebody spent some money on this airplane because they're flying it regularly. So in theory, as they have squawks and issues, they're taking in and getting it fixed. And the engine time doesn't bother me. Yeah, it's higher time, but this person is flying this airplane, all else being equal. Quiz number two, to PA-28 Piper Archer, which of the following would you make an offer on? You have airframe A and B. Airframe A is 49.50 total time, 1100 since major overhaul, and these engines are good to over 2000 hours typically. They're pretty bulletproof like homing four, uh, four cylinders. Has uh, paint seven, interior six, has older IFR, no autopilot, and it flew 80 hours last year. Airframe B, similar time on the airframe, 4,300 hours. Higher time on the engine at 1,490. Has a paint of six, interior of seven, just similar to the other airplane. Has new IFR, has a GTN 750 touchscreen GPS and a G500 flight display. It has a brand new autopilot, but it only flew 30 hours in the last 12 months. Which airplane would you buy? So pause and have a think about it. So here's my answer. I'd go for airframe B. Even though it only flew 30 hours last year, that's still a decent amount of time. And of course, I would want to know what the circumstances of that is. But... Uh, Generally speaking, this person has spent a lot of money on this airplane, especially on the avionics. Quiz number three. Which of the following aircraft would you make an offer on? We're now upgrading to a Beach 55 Baron. Airframe A and B again. So airframe A has 5,400 hours. Both engines are 1,100. Paint interior, 7.6 respectively. Older IFR, no autopilot, flew 15 hours, but the asking price is only $65,000. The other airframe, they're asking $145,000, so $80,000 more. It has 6,500 hours total time on the airframe. Similar engine time, 1,100 each engine. New paint, a pretty good interior. Has newer IFR with a GTN 750 and a G500 has a really good autopilot, flew 90 hours in the last 12 months, but they want $145,000, as I mentioned. That's $80,000 more. So the question is, which do you buy? Do you buy airframe A and put a bunch of money into it or buy airframe B and just run with it? So have a think. Let me know what you think. I'd go for airframe B, although it's $80,000 more having done upgrades to my previous 310. I can tell you the avionics upgrade itself would be to, to get what you have here would be over a hundred thousand and you would find other issues when you went into the airplane to upgrade the avionics. You always do. You always open up a can of worms. So I'd go for the airframe. I'd spend the extra money, even if it means financing it and get what you need. The final quiz, which of the following aircraft would you make an offer on? A Beechcraft A36 Bonanza. You got airframe A and B again. Airframe A has 4,500 hours. There's 650 hours on the engine and it was overhauled in 2015. Has new paint, decent interior, IFR avionics, has an autopilot, flew 12 hours in the last month sorry, 12 hours in the last year. It had a nose gear collapse in 1985. Airframe B has 5,500 hours, has 650 hours on the engine and it was overhauled in 1997. New paint, decent interior, IFR avionics and autopilot, flew 35 hours in the last 12 months 
It has no known damage history. So think hard about this one. Let me know what you think here in a second. So I'd go for airframe A. The reason is it has 650 hours since an overhaul in 2015, so it has a relatively newly overhauled engine. The nose gear collapse is trivial in my opinion because 35 year, it happened 35 years ago and it's been through 35 annual inspections since that time. So any issues from a prop strike or engine damage from that nose gear collapse would have been remedied years ago. Airframe B has 650 hours on it and it was overhauled in 1997. So on average, it's been flying kind of 28 hours a year. That's not too bad considering most of the general aviation fleet. But again, I'd go for Airframe A because it's got this relatively young engine um, that has been overhauled recently. So to summarize, what are some advertisement warning flags so-called fresh paint interior might be lipstick on a pig a fresh annual maybe a pencil whipped annual it depends on if the aircraft's been flying or not i would just always recommend a pre-buy inspection the listing pics show the airplane tied down outside and this depends on the climate i wouldn't have an issue buying an airplane tied down outside in california or arizona but if it were Florida or in a humid subtropical climate, I would prefer to look at airplanes that have been hangered. And also, of course, an overpriced airplane. Sometimes the seller motivation just isn't there. They're really not in a hurry to sell it. And I've had a few experiences with this where it just wasn't worth pursuing. Some desirable keywords and traits from advertisements. If the aircraft is flown regularly, or if they list flying often, so times will change. No major damage history. Again, there's a spectrum of damage history. I wouldn't worry about an airplane that had a gear collapse and it was 20 years ago. And of course, if uh, listing pics show the aircraft in a hangar all shiny and clean, that usually is a good uh, sign that the owner is taking care of the airplane. So the first thing I would do if it were me and I were looking for an airplane, the first picture I'd look at is the instrument panel. As I mentioned before, don't get hung up on paint and interior and things like that. Look at the avionics, look at the instrument panel, and look at what's under the cowling. Look at the engine times and is the aircraft flying regularly and been maintained. So buy an airplane that's been flying a bunch because someone has been spending that money on it. I hope this has helped. Happy flying. More videos soon.